some of the problems you're going to uh, be exposed to on the exam are going to be looking at uh, some calculations and math. And I know it can be a little intimidating, but it, the math uh, that will be presented will all be easy enough to do in your head. Um, calculator if you're under a stress situation and want to make sure your numbers are correct. But it's just basic understanding and comprehension of the relationship of forces. So when we look here at this setup here, um, the way that this question is asking is that you have, you're basically looking at two torque uh, questions. And remember, torque is equal to force times distance, right? And you're usually given the distance or given the force or one or the other, and you're being asked to solve either what force is required or what distance required for this aspect. Now, in these situations, like the dumbbell that you have in your hand, it never changes. So when you have your arm out to your side, arm over your head, the reason why things get easier or harder isn't because the weight in the, in the hand or the dumbbell is changing immediately, and also because the lever itself isn't changing either. Like the distance, your arm is your arm length, no matter what, where you're at in your exercise. What's changing is this thing called the moment arm, which is that perpendicular distance between the line of force and this axis of rotation. And anything times zero is zero, and so when you stack things up, you usually have zero, uh, zero torque, and that's why like a, a 10 pound dumbbell hung, pushed all the way out to your side is gonna feel a lot harder than a 10 pound dumbbell straight over your head. It's because that dumbbell is going right through that axis of rotation. So that's just a recap from the video lectures that we had in the, uh, earlier on in the, in the prior course here. So when we look at this problem here, what you're asked to do is basically calculate the torque of the first force. And so if I look at here, it's 100 pounds times 3 inches by force times distance. And I'm getting a total of 300 uh, units of torque. And so if I'm asked to figure out what force needs to be here in order to keep this in equilibrium where there's no movement, I'm basically going to try to solve for force times distance. What force do I need? at 10 inches to give me a torque of 300 to equal the same thing. So basically I'm gonna be taking um, torque equals force times distance. I'm gonna be solving for this 300 equals whatever this force is, we don't know what it is, times 10 inches. And so if I divide both sides by 10, I can see that it's 30, 30 pounds. So 100 pounds of force here of my muscle tension is equivalent to hold a 30 pound dumbbell weight out here, right? So that's looking at uh, torque versus force. When your lever arm is horizontal to gravity or perpendicular to gravity when it's horizontal, um, the lever arm and the moment arm are the same things. So if we look at something different here, like if we move down at this problem, now you can see that the lever arm is at an angle, right? So this was where it was before and I move down, and what ends up happening is that when you calculate torque is equal to force times distance, this distance is not the lever arm. This distance is, is, the, is the actual perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation to that line of force. So you can see that at 90 degrees, the moment arm is gonna be the, the greatest and at zero degrees, like if I could get this straight up and down, you know, you're not going to quite get it. You're going to get it more there because the tissue is going to get in the way. So let's do that this way. Let's make it like that. Okay. Um, so I look here, it's going to be there. And then when I'm straight down, it's going to feel the easiest, right? Because it's going straight through the axis of rotation. But in this case, we went down about 45 degrees. And if I were to measure this line, like if I, came, if I came down here a little lower, this line would be even shorter, shorter. So what you're measuring is this distance here. The distance between, if I draw a, you know, a line down from the axis of rotation and this way, this is getting closer and closer. So as this gets closer to zero, my torque gets closer to zero. The effort that I have to put forth, the challenge of it gets easier and easier. The further this line, this line here, the weight gets further from this axis of rotation, the more challenging it's going to get, and the most it's ever going to get is here further out. And so if we're saying that um, this is 2 inches, this is 12 inches, this is actually 14 inches is my lever length. That's the length from my elbow to my wrist, right? We're saying, kind of assuming that. Um, so this is what I'm kind of looking at in terms of my, my lever arm. But in this case, the lever arm and the moment arm are the same. But what I'm asking for is in this situation, when the dumbbell's down about 30, 30, 30 or 45 degrees. So 
I've given you everything you need to solve this right here. Let's see if I. So it's asking, what is the maximum resistance 30 pound dumbbell can offer? Well, I just kind of told you that. That's when this is at 90 degrees. So we answer number two. Um, and then so 14 inches times that 30 pounds. So 30 times 40 is going to be 420, right? So that's going to be my, uh, that's the most torque that's ever going to be offered by that. So, and all I did was torque, remember, is equal to force times distance. And that distance, again, is not the lever arm. It's not the actual length of the lever because that's going to unchange. It's never going to change in the, you know, in the human body at least. You're, you're never going to have like a contracting bone. But in terms of what we're asking about this is the actual moment arm, that perpendicular distance from that line straight down from the axis of rotation to the, the line of, of, of force. Or in this case, in free weights, it's going to be gravity. So if I'm looking for this, this is the unknown right now. That's supposed to be a question mark. I'm solving two, I'm solving a torque problem. So if I know that the dumbbell has a weight of 30 pounds, right? So that's a 30 pound dumbbell and it's 10 inches away from the axis rotation. So it's got 300 units of torque, right? And again, I did force times distance. So I did force, which was 30. That's the weight of the dumbbell times 10. That's the moment arm, not the lever arm. And now I want to look at my axis of rotation or my, my effort, my contraction, or I would say my muscle attachment from the muscle contraction that is showing two inches away from the uh, axis of rotation. So that's two inches. And so I know that um, I'm trying to figure out how much tension is being generated. So if these are supposed to be equal, right, and generate to overcome that, I just need the minimum amount to overcome. I already know that the dumbbell is generating 300 units of torque. So if I put that up here, 300 units of torque, and I don't know what my force is. That's what I'm trying to solve for. And I'm multiplying by, in this case, two inches, right? If I take two and I divide two by both sides, that means they might, I'm going to result with 150. That means that I'm having 150 units of muscle tension. That's what I'm looking at. So again, it's just about you being able to solve the torque equals force times distance and being able to understand what number goes into force, which is always going to be the weight. Um, when you're dealing with free weights, it's always going to be gravity straight down, and you need that perpendicular distance. And the only time the perpendicular distance is going to be the same as the moment arm, the lever arm, the moment arm, is when you're 90 degrees, when you're parallel. Or I'm sorry, when you're when you're parallel to the horizon. Otherwise, you have to know you're going to take not this number, the length, the, the distance actually from the axis of rotation to the point right during, through the lever. It's going to be that line that exists outside the lever. So the only time it's going to go through the lever is right here at, at 90 degrees. So hopefully that was helpful.